Welcome back to the Natty 19 Podcast. Woop woop. I'm Jonathan Marshall, and joining me again, the awesome Natty 19 crew, Charlie, James, Kway, and Christy Lee. Hello. Hi. What's going on, guys? Hello, hello. Tonight, we are heading into episode 67, continuing the Tomb of Annihilation story that we've been slow cooking for over a year now. I gotta say, at times it feels like just yesterday I was nervously poring over the newly released TOA source book, trying to wrap my head around it. But I think we've nailed it pretty good so far. What do you think? Yeah, to the wall. All right. All right. Before we jump into the action, I want to thank our newly subscribed patron, Eric. Thank you, my friend, for your support. Welcome to the Patreon family. And again, thank you to Birdo. Jumbiku, Mike, Hot Ketchup, Kristen, the list goes on. Thanks to all those who rated us and reviewed us on iTunes. Thanks, guys. The show goes on. Thank you all for listening. Let's do this. Bring in the music, episode 67. <laughs> Copernicus gets a magic song. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days. That'll be the name. <laughs> Oh, I did want to toast, before we begin playing, I want to toast um, my good friend Dan, who had given us a bottle of maple wine that he brewed himself. It is uh, it's pretty good. It's My face is all warm, and the warm feeling is <laughs> moving down my body. It's hitting me quick. It's good <laughs> stuff, Dan. Happy birthday, too. Happy birthday. Yeah, it's delicious. We like it. And what is this? The uh, Maple Madness? Maple, maple Madness. Maple Madness. All bottled right. in 2017. It was a good year. A thanks, good year. Dan. Good thanks. year for maple syrup. Thanks for listening, and thanks for the wine. I'm sure uh, Quincy's going to be... Appropriate time of year. We just got, lit. what, the March sugar snow oh, coming yeah, in? true. <laughs> so, where did we leave off? Ah, yes. You guys had met Rosna C. You discovered he was dying from the death curse. There was no fight, only a verbal confrontation. He had openly given you the final puzzle cube. Perhaps he came to a certain realization. You don't know for sure why he gave it to you, honestly. He saw Zabril in his presence. And, yeah. you know, yeah. He got scared, decided to hand it over. Uh, what else? Oh, Quincy had located and retrieved a piece of the Krugen Sphere. <laughs> he also learned that his mentor and lifelong friend, Triss, uh, was not only here in Chult a hundred years ago, but he was directly involved in the story of Mesro uh, when Rosnessy and his Legion of Undead hit the walls. He was involved with Sibylia, Artisimber, and the Krugen Sphere itself. I mean, what happened? Uh, well... It's clear they believed a ritual involving the sphere would save Mesero, even if it did put Sibylia at risk, as Triss believed. The Red Wizards returned bloodied, suffering massive loss. Only Zagmira and Dyrax survived, and Zagmira mortally wounded. Dyrax insisted taking her to the heart of Uptau, where she could potentially be restored with the proper facility. And you've decided as a group, I believe, that it would be wise to accompany them through the magic circle. And if anything, use that uh, uh, as an opportunity to recoup and perhaps even resupply some before moving onward to the Black Obelisk. And that, of course, is where you hope to use the puzzle cubes to gain entry into the tomb of the nine gods. Now, the puzzle cubes, while I'm on it, it's said, would return to their shrines should they leave Omu. So, Orvex, Riga, and Svitlongi have agreed to remain 
and begin preparations here in Omu with with the cubes, keeping them still. Um, and this is where tonight begins. I hope that was an adequate recap, bringing us back to it. You guys leveled up, I believe. Um, did we go over that on air? No, I don't think we did on air. Uh, real quick, going around the table, anybody get anything good? We'll start with uh, Quincy here. Quincy did get, uh, he chose his level in Bard because, you know, now he has a dip in Rogue, but he took his recent level in Bard. He does get a new ability, but I'd like to keep that close to my chest for now. All right, all right. So what level are you in Bard? He's level six Bard, level one <coughs> Rogue. Oh, okay. And do, uh, do we roll hit points at this moment? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Ooh. Ooh I rolled good. a seven. Oh, that's let's pretty good. If, uh, let's see if the GM does better for me. Uh, two. All right, so it's a <laughs> seven it is. What is Warlock, D12? All right. Not bad, not bad. I think it's bad. a D20. Uh, let's go over to Copernicus. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Uh, what do I want to talk about? Cappy hit level seven warlock, so he's getting up there. But fourth, um, fourth level spells. Yeah, I got fourth level spells. Thanks for the reminder. Um, I got a couple new invocations, so now I've got Trickster's Escape and Sculptor of Flesh. So one of them is a freedom of movement, and the other one is a polymorph skill. Excellent. So I'm pretty Excellent. excited about the two of those. And then, um, yeah, as far as my spells, I'll keep those under wraps until they come up. So it'll be a nice little surprise. All right, right on. And uh, what's your hit die? A D8, I believe. D8, coming in hot with a four. With a four. Right four down it the is. middle. So plus two, I get six more hit points, bringing me up to a total of 54. Ooh, one more level. We get to choose like a feat. Or an ability score bonus, right? Right. If we live. If we live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Zaves, what do you got? Uh, Zave roll reached level seven as a ranger. Um, due to that, he got his class specific um, for seventh level. It's called Supernatural Defense. Uh, essentially, I gain extra resilience whenever... Um, uh, my prey assaults my mind or body. So with that, I can roll an additional D6 every time I need to make an, a, a saving throw or an ability check to escape target's grapple. All right. There you have it. A what? physical grapple? Yes, physical grapple. That's awesome. Well, they have to be someone that uh, I've set as Slayer's Prey. So. Oh, oh okay. I see now. Yeah, you mark them up. And... All right. right. All right. It's not just everyone that'd be fucking broken. <laughs> <laughs> One additional D6 to every saving throw. Yep. Ah. All right, Irame. All right. Um, Irame did get a fourth level spell slot. I'm not going to uh, tell you what I chose for that fourth level spell yet, but I will tell you that I did switch a spell out this time. And forgive me, but I cannot remember the spell I switched out. But the spell I loaded in was Magic Circle. Magic Circle. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I've always wanted to use it, so give it a shot. What does it do? Uh, that's <laughs> what it does. Um, so you create a 10-foot radius, 20-foot tall cylinder of magical energy centered on a point on the ground that you can see. Glowing runes appear wherever the cylinder intersects the floor or other surface. And I choose one of the, so you choose a type of creature, essentially, that it protects you from. Celestials, elementals, fey, patrons, or undead. I didn't know. Are you laughing at me? I was laughing at the way you pronounced celestial. Did I say it weird? Celestials? Yeah. It was okay. It was okay, but I (laughs) (laughs) wasn't sure if we were buzzed already or not. (laughs) Um, And I roll a d6 plus... My constitution. I got a five. Oh, no, finally. Wow. Decent roll. Yeah. What do you say, my dungeon master? Want to give me a six? Four. Eh. And you get a con bonus, too? Yep. So it's seven. Total Shit. of seven. Nice. Four hit points. Than I got May I use level. your pencil, Charlie? 
And uh, did you want to do mine now, or wait back. till we get FG up? Uh, we can do yours now. A six. Six. On a D10. Six. Oh, D10. D10 for, the for, Ranger. for Ranger. No kidding. I got a five. I'll take it. Wow, he you rolled lower than all of us this time. But we also got over over half. Yeah. Well, I got half exactly, but I'm happy with that. We've rolled so consistently low on my hit points like both of us every time. That was a good one. I needed that. Make you feel a little bit now, more... Uh, now you can almost take a full A little hit. more robust. So now we are at the same level that we left off with our Abyss characters. Oh, that's cool to know. Yeah. Uh, Ash is level 7, and he had 69 hit points versus my 54 with Cappy. I am up to a total of 68 hit points. Jesus, the double mine, dude. And Ash was a ranger too, right? He was. Yep. Yes. And would you have 68? He was a better ranger than Zabro. Ash is better than <laughs> Zabro. <Zabel. laughs> <laughs> he was. He could actually hit stuff from far away. What was your con bonus? What, what What's your con bonus? My con sucks. I just get a plus two. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, that's pretty good considering. Yeah. My, no, my rolls are nowhere near as board. godly as yours were, though. <laughs> all right. No, that character was way OP. Are we ready? Now that we've got all the character stuff out of the way, let's get to it. So, this is still 19 Hammer, by the way. Evening. The faint smell of death and decay hangs in the air within the heart of Uptau. The place is dimly lit by pale blue light emanating from small glass orbs. Valindra, standing in front of a shelf of scroll cases and dusty tomes, gently closes a thick book. A small puff of dust billows up and disperses just as quickly as it appeared. Her flowing black robe hangs tight against her elven frame, and her long blonde hair in this light appears as bright white causing her eyes to appear as black as night. There are no signs of the mercenaries, and Wesson's body rests in a large capsule hooked up to a machine of sorts by tubes and clamps. Zagmira lay incapacitated on a stone slab while Dyrax works on her. Valindra stares at the body on the slab. Zagmira was a fool to attack the Fane in that manner, but it seems the mission can be considered a great success. Tell me, she turns her attention to your group, what do you know of this Tomb of the Nine Gods? Who wants to take this one? <laughs> um, We're all looking at Airmay. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, only that the solution to the death curse lays there. I understand. Well... Sadly, for all of our sake, something is preventing me from divining beyond the door marked by the obelisk in the northern part of Omu. However, since I've begun my work here, I've been researching a name we've discovered signed on the obelisk. It's been difficult to find anything that pertains to this person, and make no mistake, I am one who makes difficult things look simple, typically. Though, if the information that I have found is accurate, the soul manga would be heavily guarded, not just by the most fearsome of creatures, but traps and contraptions of only the most devious and destructive type. Do you have any magics for detecting these traps? Sadly, I have no idea what to expect beyond the mental capacity of such a being. Hmm. Clearly, the looks upon your faces tells me you are not prepared to enter this place. We will do what we must. Um, Cappy wanders over to Wesson. What'd you say he was in? Like a tank of sorts? A capsule, yeah. And he'll stick his hand up on it and run his finger down it. Yeah, nice. His drow finger. <laughs> yeah, he uh, just appears to be a corpse inside there being preserved. Very strange magic. Be careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> Valindra, is the Soulmonger an actual uh, flesh and blood being? Uh, no, Irame, uh, though that is a good question. 
the soul monger itself, to my understanding, is an artifact. At this, your conversation is interrupted by a small, muffled voice coming from Quincy's pocket. Ksh! Quincy, can you hear me? It's a neat. If you're alive, you must return here. Ksh! <laughs> 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 So. Quincy blushes <laughs> profusely <laughs> and looks down at his pockets. And uh, for one, one hand goes in and kind of like just rests on the shard of the Krugen sphere just to make sure it wasn't that. But then when he heard Anit's, then it registers that it was Anit's name. So that uh, so then he moves to the, what did Anit give him? Yeah, it was a uh, sending stone. Oh, ah. yes, the sending stone. So, yes, then he... Uh, reaches in and he rem- pulls the sending stone out for all to see. Someone here. Been trying to find you. Oh, and don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> Cappy will Quincy. stare at Valindra. <laughs> <laughs> you look up and he mutters under his breath, Copernicus. <laughs> <laughs> you look up to uh, see Valindra staring at you. I suggest you make preparations. Uh, you may use my circle at your leisure. When I am ready, I will make my way to Omu. Quincy will try to... He'll hold the setting stone and he'll try to convey. He'll, he'll say, um, We will make our way back to Port Nyanzaru with haste. No response. <laughs> um, uh, Valindra, do you plan on making the descent into the into the tomb of the nine gods with us? As she's fumbling through scroll cases on the bookshelf, she uh, pauses only to reply, I do not expect success if you are to go in alone. Yermay's going to look at all of her comrades. Yeah, Quincy's also kind of shifting his eyes left and right. That she could be joining us. This is great news, uh, sorceress of your power. We could all learn something from her. Has Copernicus so easily forgotten his wife? <laughs> <laughs> it's a business relationship. <laughs> um, yeah, she uh, motions to the magic circle. She says, do not keep me waiting long. Well, do we have to come back through the heart to get back to Omu? No. 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 So then... You could go to any circle. Should we just make preparations to meet you back at Omu? Yes, that would be wise. Then, uh, we'll give her the digits. (laughs) (laughs) The coordinates? Yeah. (laughs) I think she has to give us those. (laughs) We'll we'll take them. (laughs) You did mention that Orvex was there. Wait. Yes, Orvex is there. I will meet with them and begin making preparations to enter the Tomb of the Nine Gods. Failure is not an option here. And you would not enter without us, would you, Valindra? I would certainly try to wait, but not too long. (laughs) She would be dead in minutes without us here, man. I am not a fool. I would certainly not go in alone. I like the way she talks. (laughs) <laughs> I like the way you talk I like the, I like the way she walks <laughs> Quincy bows his head and says Then we beg your leave Lady Valindra Irma is going to uh, pull out her compass It points just, just right behind you <laughs> <laughs> Just to see what it does See if it points at the portal Because if it points, to, you know Oh, gotcha. could be like a navigator. It's like pointing the shortest distance, ah, you know. So right. she pulls it out to see if it points. Yeah, that's a good interesting thought. Into, interesting to the portal. Thought. Yeah, it sadly it it points uh, northward. Mm. Yeah. Then she'll look to her friends and she'll say, "Just a thought," and put it back in her. Sure. Yeah. Sack. No, it uh, it was a good test. It might it might come in handy later. <laughs> well, Cappy will uh he'll tap the the glass that's surrounding Wesson. And just kind of mutter to himself, you know, like, "We'll, we'll make sure you're taken care of, Wesson. We'll get you sent home." Then he'll head for the portal. All right, uh, Quincy, you uh, you align the glyphs as drawn after Anit's teaching, and the circle begins to glow. 
Again, you step through. And as your surroundings bend and blur, they reform, putting you atop a balcony overlooking Port Nyanzaro's city streets. So fucking cool. Lights dot the vista below, maybe a hundred feet, and out beyond the harbor as far and off to the south, you see the dark jungle looming in the distance. You recognize this building as the Temple of Savras, where you first met Anit's grandfather, Zetembe. This balcony must be on one of the upper levels as a winding staircase hugs the wall as it leads down to the ground level, stopping at every landing about 10 feet. Each landing seems to have the same potted plant in the same spot, wedged between two clay vases. Is it vases or... Vases. Vase. Vase. Vi. Vasai. Does the uh, hand banister go all the way down unbroken, or does it break every 10 feet? It, well, it, it, it doesn't break. It just continues around each landing. Right, so Cappy could, in theory, try to ride the banister all the way down. You could, I mean, there might but be it does things come that to stick up <laughs> <laughs> here and there. The jungle—it seems so far away from here. Yet we were there just moments ago. Yes, this portal magic is quite amazing. I just like saying portal magic. <laughs> <laughs> Irume is going to uh, walk up to. Uh, let's just say Copernicus and Zabril and throw one arm around each of them and uh, just say it's time to celebrate, friends. Uh, we don't have much time, so let's make it quick. You begin making your way down the staircase, looking down at the dark chamber below. It's dimly lit by a single brazier in the center of the room, quiet as ever. And maybe as you're making your way down the final stretch... You hear a voice echo from the chamber beyond on the lower floor. Is somebody there? The temple is closed at this hour. Does it sound like Anit's grandfather? It does sound like Grandfather Zetembe. And at that, you can see the soft glow of a lamp approaching the room. It is us, old one. And Quincy says old one in a very vener, you know, venerating tone. Vener, venerating? <laughs> <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> Surely it is not close to a group of weary travelers. He rounds the bend and curiously he raises the light up to you. And upon seeing your faces, he says, A safe rest bless. It is the three seas shipping. We have been expecting you. And freight. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Master Zatembe, you couldn't have forgotten our full name already. <laughs> there are many important folk who have been around asking questions about your progress. Come in now, come in. We cannot stand out here all night. And you see, he's got his nightcap on, his nightgown. What time is it? Middle close, of the night. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, close to dawn. No. No. When, like we, when we left. Midnight? Close to midnight, yeah. Okay. When we left Nainzaru... We had had a mission from Devitas, and that mission was to, what What was that? Was that to escort a neat? Yeah, and to gain info on the Red Wizards. Mm, where were we supposed to go? That wasn't the heart of Uptow? The Eldani Basin. Yes. Right. And we Thank did you. that, and they already paid Devitas. Okay. He says, I am glad to see you well. Anit has been howling about your progress. I must say, ad nauseum. <laughs> <laughs> Is she awake now? Uh, yeah, on cue, you hear Anit's voice as she charges into the room. And through a series of hugs... Chain lightning from Irma. <laughs> Who did she hung for, hug first? She says, I am so glad you're well. Did you get my message? Who did she hug first? Quincy. Quincy. Mm. He, had, he had the sending he, he <laughs> stone. <laughs> and eat to our sight for sore eyes. Yes, we did get your message. <laughs> her, her happy face darkens uh, for a moment. And wh- where is Zimwabi? Quincy's face also darkens. Zimwabi 
In He's our just p- fine. <laughs> He's back we, at camp waiting for us. We parted ways, would you say, how many days ago now? Two weeks ago. A week ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. We will not give up on Zimbabwe. But he is alive. I trust so. Yes. As far as we know. Well, please, everyone, come in to the chamber where it is a bit more comfortable. Yeah, we'll follow her in. Um, that was uh, Zatembi that uh, suggested. Uh, Irame's going to uh, ask Anit. Not to just jump right into things, but your message, you were warning us of someone. Um, but I'm afraid there was some static. Oh, yeah, I was worried that the Sending Stone wouldn't reach that far. Yes, there's a lot to discuss. And I'd hate to, I'd hate to pile all of this on you, uh, especially you look so weary. But I have a little more information after we last split ways. I've been doing some digging on this. And then uh, she's interrupted by her grandfather. Oh, yes, uh, that vile creature, Valindra, you've been spending your time with. Not voluntarily. She's not so bad. It's bad enough that these visions of the red-robed men were turned out to be the red wizards. Now, though they have been defanged in recent times, Valindra, however, is bad news. And if I had known that my granddaughter would be within her presence, I never would have sanctioned such a journey. And this whole time he's staring at her angrily. I'm sorry that you think we have put your granddaughter in danger. Forgive us, old one. I... But I do believe the death curse has made unlikely allies out of out of many. Well, be wary of that creature. I share your distrust. Anyway, you must come in. Tell us about your what you have discovered. We know very little, though we have been trying to follow your progress using divination. And we do know some. We know of your journey through the shrines. We believe the secret to stopping the death curse lie within the tomb of the nine gods the shrines held these artifacts called we've been calling them puzzle cubes and these are the keys to enter the tomb of the nine gods the tomb of the nine gods rests near an obelisk which i do believe you have seen in your visions i have indeed yes. and we do ha- now have in our possession all the cubes necessary to enter the tomb uh i did you uh, Did I warn you, uh, great darkness hovers over this obelisk. You must be weary of that place. And at that, everybody, you begin to feel a sharp, burning sensation in your stomach. It's this maple madness. (laughs) (laughs) And as you look over Zetembi's shoulder, an old ancient-looking clock stands firm against the wall, and the hand strikes midnight. As this pain racks your body, Zavril and Quincy takes 39 poison damage. What the fuck? Instantly, as this pain shoots all through your body. (laughs) Everyone else, Copernicus, Irime, Take 17 damage. What? Jesus. And we haven't rested, so I was at 24. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Quincy's rested. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm pretty like certain I'm asshole. unconscious, though. <laughs> Give me that. Uh, and as. Oh, what strange magic is this, Zatembe? What are you doing to us? As you guys crumble to your knees at this racking pain, your vision begins to blur. As you hear the muffled shouts and cries of Anit, and as they try to help you into the room and get you on some com- a comfortable place to lay, and through blurred vision and coming in and out of consciousness here and there, uh, you see them, you know, mixing up vials and potions and pouring through books, and and then before too long, you start to come to your senses as Anit collects all the empty vials, puts them on a tray, and carries them off. Zetembi closes a dusty tome. Says, now, are you certain you haven't encountered any, uh, perhaps 
poisonous cloud from a trap of sorts or any sorts of gas. We have encountered many things. Yes. What, uh, there was the, the gas that transported us to another realm, mm. but that was how many days ago now? Could it be a consequence of the circle travel? Ooh. No, no, this is a poison. I'm sure of that. We have... Question is, it closely resembles a poison known as the Midnight Tears. However, that must be ingested. Bag of nails. But why? Midnight Tears. Tell me more about this poison. Is it normally lethal? Oh, yes. Uh, it can very well be lethal. It's also uh, concocted from extremely rare ingredients. Very expensive, unless one knows how to gather the ingredients themselves. Why would that old bat poison us? Did he eat, too? What else have we eaten that we did not have control over? Nothing. We've been surviving on ration. Can uh, Cappy remember if Bag of Nails ate the soup, too, or not? Yeah, why don't you give me a uh, check of sorts? A (laughs) a remembrance (laughs) check. Just roll a 20-sided die. (laughs) 13. 13. You seem to recall... He did eat, but you can't remember if he had eaten before or after you. Can you build a tolerance to this plant? Well, well, I suppose it is possible. Um, Anything is possible, really. Um, He tried to poison us after. Wow. We spared his life. So we go back and we skin him. (laughs) We hang him up on the walls of the three seas. I just don't understand why. Irma's like... Sad. She's saddened. When we met him, he was shooting arrows at us. <laughs> he was trying to kill us. Mm. So the real question is, why would he just all of a sudden invite us to dinner? Perhaps he was losing the fight all of a sudden. I don't know. Uh, at that, <clears throat> Anit comes in with uh, blankets in her arms. And she says... I know you have much to do, but Grandfather insists you stay here for the evening. And I must say, I agree with him. What are the accommodations like? Poor at best. (laughs) 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 Probably better than our fucking hammocks over at... I don't know. Three I think thi- Three sheets. <laughs> three sheets to the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought... Devitas might be upgrading our sleeping situation while we were away with all our new money. Or there's somebody else in. or there's somebody else sleeping in our bed since we've been gone. We could have been replaced. Well, <clears throat> I can't deny free free food and healing. Okay. I had to get a beer because we're back in Nyanzaru. Yeah. I always drink <clears throat> when we're in Nyanzaru. <laughs> you, you know do. that. You do. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows that. <laughs> Everybody knows that. <laughs> So Cappy will look at the rest of the group and just, uh, how long do we plan on staying here? Because if we're going to rest now, then say we do it and we get our, get our chores done and we get back. I say we use tomorrow to get whatever we need to be, whatever needs to be done. I don't think that Valindra will go ahead without us. I don't think we should dilly, dally, but... September says we shouldn't give Valindra any trust, so I don't want to wait too long. The old man hasn't led us astray yet. Uh, nor will I. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should be able to get done quickly what we need to get done. We should stop at the three C's. We should check in with Valindra. We should okay. <laughs> essentially load up on shit. Yeah. Valindra? No, nope, not what I meant. Syndra. Syndra. <laughs> Valindra is fine. Yeah, so Zetembe says, well... We have much to do, uh, and as I said, very important people are uh, awaiting your return. So I suggest you get some rest. Uh, there's no telling what tomorrow will bring. Now, do we get the impression that whatever Zatembe and Anit gave us got rid of the poison? Or is that going to rack us again? No, I mean, you're starting to f- feel better. They had concocted something up to also cure you for of those hit points healing potions. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. mechanically, it, all it did is do damage. When we Everything make, else was just fluff. When we had to make that saving throw, I thought it was just, like, gonna be rancid meat or something. I'm, like, shocked that that guy fucking poisoned us. I bet you he poisoned <laughs> himself and was... Yeah, Zatembe, as he hears you talking about it, he turns to you and says, 
You are fortunate that you were here when the poison struck and not in the bowels of some ruin, standing toe-to-toe with... Gelatinous cube or Creatures of sorts. Dark renown. (laughs) Creatures of dark origins. (laughs) (laughs) Um... I mean, you guys are exhausted. Yeah, yeah let's rest. We are let's ever it. moving. Let's. Uh, it's midnight sleep. now. I mean, nineteen hammer was a long a safe day. Safe place, dude. a safe place to sleep yeah. and permission Full to rest. just conk out. Yep. Now your heads hit the pillows, right? One of those deals. Oh, a pillow. One by one, <laughs> you you conk out. You know, you you enter your trance. Copernicus, you got thoughts. Your mind is racing. Everything that's going on. You're thinking about your wife. That fateful eve when she was cut down. And you hear it in her dying breath. Copernicus. And from the darkest corner of the room, you see the shadow stretch. Sybil slowly steps out. Yes. Yeah, as it's stretching across, I let it stretch to its maximum length, and she comes out, and... I'm surprised they let you into a place like this, Sybil. Copernicus. What do you want? I have come to strengthen your mood. You must get some rest, Copernicus. I have a feeling tomorrow will be a long day. You have a feeling, huh? you seen something? Copernicus, you have grown in strength, and with it, my power can flow more freely through you. You still have a little ways to go. Yes, I felt, I felt your presence and tickling the back of my mind recently. Did you see what I did with that dead lizard? Yes, it was <laughs> glorious. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> when he would be bragging about that. Copernicus. <laughs> Copernicus, don't be a fool. <laughs> uh, you see what I did with that? <laughs> it sounds so dirty. <laughs> Oh, okay, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> what He's that talking lizard? about raising it I up raised its dead, dead spirit. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> it just sounded really dirty, though. <laughs> All right, here we go. Copernicus, that is but a small taste of what is to come. What is, what will be yours soon enough. Get some rest. You seem troubled. I need you to clear your mind and remain focused. Just worried about this tomb. I'm gonna need everything you can give me, Sybil. I will do everything I can to see us through. But I feel my freedom ever closer. That is wonderful. And with that, perhaps... Your wife returned to your loving arms as she slowly backs her way into the corner of the room, disappearing in the shadow. Gabby will just continue to uh, fiddle with those gems that he stole from Rosnessy's palace room. Or Eventually, morning finds you all. The sounds of the busy streets can be heard even within the Temple of Savras. A neat storms into the room, all chipper. What's for breakfast? Sadly, Grandfather doesn't believe in breakfast. We have a big lunch around here. Yes, intermittent fasting. I've heard it can do wonders for the body and mind. <laughs> <laughs> Irame is uh, getting herself together, and she says, there's much to do today. We need to move. Uh, yes, I understand that you are probably dying to check in at the 3C Shipping and Freight Headquarters. 
Daniel Devitas, I'm, I imagine, would love to see you. I had stopped by and paid him for your services. And I'm, I'm imagining, I'm picturing you guys are getting your gear, as, as she's saying this, getting everything together. Yeah, strapping up. We appreciate that, Anit. And I apologize for the haste we must make. How much did our services cost you anyways? Oh, uh, don't trouble yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was no bother. Uh, grandfather found that it was a worthy cause. After I had returned with the news of the Red Wizards, he appeared to have more interest in your mission. Quincy had a mortified look on his face like it was a very crass question. Quincy's starting to feel himself slip back into the manners of civilization now that mm. we're, we're back in town. Mm. Zatembi's nowhere to be found. Um, you wake up. Nyanzaru is before you. Yeah, Irame is excited. She's going to immediately enter the streets to move towards whatever destination we're going to first. Yeah. She's like Belle in Beauty and the Beast right now. Birds are fucking chirping. She's well, excited. It'll be good to see Devitas. Kind of miss the rotund little fella. As you're making your way down the busy streets of Nyanzaru towards the Tariki Anchorage, there's something different. The place seems packed and buzzing uh, with adventurers. They're all over the place. You see them gathering at merchant stalls. They're walking through the streets, representing in all manner of different companies. Uh, some of them anyway, and others not represent, don't have any emblems or anything. You imagine freelancers. But yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell there's been progress, development happening in the area on the frontier we're going to the three seas right yeah to get to the three seas you need to pass by the tyreki anchorage and as you do there's a whole new wave of green exhibitionists i see that i'm keeping an eye my eyes open for the children the orphans the orphans (laughs) as you're moving your way towards the tyreki anchorage you see the town is just exploding with life the pillar that rose, the memories start flooding in in the pillar that rose during the battle of the Ankylosaurus, ever more ingrained into the scenery of the town. Seems so long ago. There's a couple vendor stalls, one on either side of the pillar, and the pillar itself has even more ribbons and and signs pinned to it, flyers. (laughs) The Copronicus Um, pillar. A group of children (laughs) storms by you. You hear one of them, last one to the pillar is a pygmy lizard. And you see them all flurry by you, laughing and giggling. Out of my way, you urchins. (laughs) (laughs) You hit one of them in the head and he kind (laughs) of goes sore. Smack him in the back of the head. (laughs) No. And he turns to look, I point at Quincy. (laughs) You make your way past the stall where... Devitas first led you by to pick up the fruit from the sick child. Now it's being ran by an elderly woman. No child in sight. Aww. I believe he was missing the last time you went. You visited, yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's been gone. Yeah. Still, it just drives it home, right? I mean, he could have come back, but he didn't. No. Uh, as you approach... <laughs> the woman's got <laughs> fucking strung Christmas light bulbs up behind her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give anything away, I haven't. As you approach the Three Seas Shipping and Freight Headquarters, the place looks magnificent. It's busy. As a matter of fact, a new addition to it, a bounty board of sorts, a, a job board, is in the lawn facing the street side with all, all manner of contracts pinned to it. And looking closer at it, you see they're all requests from locals. You don't really know all various names addressed, of course, to the three seas shipping and freight. And as you're staring at this mission board, the door opens and a group of adventurers begins making their way out. And you hear the voice of Daniel Devitas inside. And make sure they're unblemished this time, all right? It's half pay for damaged goods. The door closes. The adventurers kind of walk by you, give you a solid nod, maybe even a hail there. (laughs) (laughs) I hope they haven't been sleeping in our beds. (laughs) That's the the same thing. Exactly exactly what what I I thought. (laughs) Before any of this even happened, I I was like, there's new people there. 
We all look replaced. at him a little cross. Yeah. You might get a <laughs> well met, well met friend. Ear May There's is going a young to man with a rapier. There's a <laughs> <laughs> Alvin girl that's. <laughs> Ear May's going to look to the sign to yep. see if it's still misspelled. Uh, nope, it's spelled correctly and it's hanging from both chains. Places in business. Didn't Quincy yeah. mend that? He <laughs> mended the sign but didn't fix the, the writing. <laughs> right. oh, so yeah. she's going to actually elbow Quincy yeah, and then point up to the sign to see that it's been corrected. Yeah, cast at level one mending doesn't uh, <laughs> auto correct. <laughs> <spelling Auto-correct. errors. laughs> <laughs> I rather miss the old sign, hear me? I thought it added character. But I do suppose we must present ourselves as being professionals now. Hard to believe. He kind of looks around, soaking it all in, amazed at how much this um, our company has grown. Mm, it looks better. Still smells like shit over here, though. It does still <laughs> smell like shit, for sure. It's the husbandry. And with that, Irame is going to walk in. As you walk in, Devitas sees you. Excitedly, jumps up. Makes his way around the desk, kind of hip-checking it a bit. Pausing only to grab a piece of fruit out of a full bowl. Lush, full bowl <laughs> of fruit. And he comes up and starts hugging you. Tymora's sweet tits. Would you look at this? <laughs> Give it to us. Well, if it isn't the fabled four of the three seas shipping and freight. Ah, uh, yes, have you been telling tall tales, Devitas? I don't have to. Word of your exploits had reached even my ears. Takes a bite of fruit. Come on, come in, come in, relax. Petrie! So tell me, you're alive, that's good. I think uh, Cappy would take out the uh, horn from the King of Feathers and plop it down on his desk. His eyes widen. Wow. I bet we can mount this. He's looking up into the rafters. <laughs> but that would look good right there in that empty spot. When you look up, you see other trophies of sort from various beasts that uh, adventurers since have slain. But nothing looks as grand as the horn of the King of Feathers. <laughs> You've done well in our absence, Devitas. Yes. Business is booming. Word of your exploits is uh, it's really gotten around. Hell, it even brought Alarod out here. Quincy's, uh, as he's kind of singing our praise and telling us that we've become somewhat famous, like people are talking about us, he's actually thinking back to uh, the people that we've met over at Camp Vengeance and the uh, man in particular that he spoke to about Camp Righteous. And he just, he's just kind of thinking that, um, and maybe he'll say something like, you know, what we have done, people... You seem to appreciate it, but the real heroes are the ones out there, like those that have fallen at Camp Righteous. Nobody seems to be singing their praise. And yet, but for them, who knows where we would be. I understand, Quincy, but we're alive. All right? They're dead. (laughs) Our our journey continues. (laughs) All right? You got to learn to accept the glory while you have it, because any minute... Somebody can come and take it away. Quincy kind of nods his head, actually seeing the wisdom in that. And says, perhaps, perhaps I will take my lute when I have the time, and I will write a song about those people at Camp Righteous. And I will call it episode 19 and 20 <laughs> of the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Petrie! Where the hell is this kid? He's supposed to be helping me with all these charts. Yes, I'd love to see Petrie. Looking around the room, because when we left here, it was like we had our straw mattresses on the yeah, beds. We were it. all kind of bunking up and like this. What do we this see? Yeah, yeah looking around you, you don't see any beds. It's yeah. all just, it's all like an office now almost. You know, you get, you get all sorts of charts and there's maps of ruins that weren't there before. You know, it's just, uh, it's evolved into something a little bit more than uh, the tier one warehouse that you've had. Mm. Says, oh, right, yeah, last time you guys were here, place was loaded with some straw mattresses and some crates. It's like, yeah, we got a barracks now, a full-fledged barracks. Oh, yeah, we got all sorts of adventurers working for us now. We had to use insect repellent just to sleep in our mattresses. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, yeah, things are looking up. 
Yeah, Alarad arrived uh, yesterday morning with a crew of very important-looking people. Uh, it'll be good to see Alarad. Mm. I'll tell you, he's over at Wakanga's Villa right now, and uh, I bet he'd tan my hide if I didn't send you over there immediately. And if you don't go immediately, at least tell him that I told you to go there immediately. <laughs> I think the only thing that could sway our path would perhaps be a, a full meal, a warm, hot meal. Mm. Irume tries to hide her excitement at the fact that Wakanga will be their next important stop. Roll a deception check. <laughs> Maybe we'll all see. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's a eight. Oh, yeah. Even my natural roll, I could tell. <laughs> I could tell what's on your mind. <laughs> so don't forget to pick up your pay, too. You got two weeks sitting there for you. Two weeks? Ooh. We've been gone a month, Daniel. If- in five days, the money ship comes every ten days. Mm. Wait, how long have you been now? Well, it's Hammer 20. The last money ship came, well, the last, the, when you guys got paid, it was 25 night all. The money ship came in. Oh, five. And and it, how many ten days in a month? Three? He's right. <laughs> <laughs> if we got paid for 25 uh, In five days, you'll get That was just like real third. life yeah. for me. I was like, what are you talking about? It's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's throw the yeah, I went back and listened to all the nyan zaru episodes he did today Th- throw the gold out there so we can add it before we go to the potion prince uh, how, uh but I, what i didn't catch is how much your pay was because i said yeah, probably said it higher than it forget. used to be i said your pay was whatever deal whatever your contract Whatever you worked out with Alarad. Well, I feel like last you can time. Make it up, and then if it's you know, you just be like, it's there, and there's a bonus in there for you. Or something. Well, last time, yeah, we didn't even take it. We just like put it all. Oh, because it was debt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's how you got out of it last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there should be about seven hundred and fifty gold pieces each in there for you. Little bonus that uh, cute little Anit girl stopped in, dropped off a two hundred gold piece sack. Well, howdy doody. That's a lot of manga leaves for you, Copernicus. <laughs> She's like, I gotta be honest, that uh, that Anit girl, her and her grandfather is the reason probably why the three seas shipping and freight is so popular right now. That girl's been singing your exploits all over the place. Between you and me, she kind of wigs me out, all that divinity magic and shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, while we're here then... Uh, can we do a quick inventory? That 150 gold pieces and gems, can I just give that to... Yeah, yeah, you could convert it all here. And then we can split that four ways. So, uh, since we're back in town, uh, it comes out to 199. A so. piece? No, oh, we weren't getting no. 750 each. You were getting 750 each. 750 right, right. Each. I, I'm saying from, I had a group. Oh, he had split. Oh. Yeah. Because I had the satchel, of money, another thing of 24 yeah, gold pieces. Yeah, you were pieces. keeping track of our. So go- pretty much with the pieces. silver, let's just call it 200 gold pieces. So I had 199, Total? 24 silver. So 50 a piece? So 50 a piece. And what was your cut? 50. <laughs> <laughs> that was with the 150 gold pieces and gems. Cappy was honest on it and spread it out. Minus an accounting fee, <laughs> and <a> handling <laughs> fee, <laughs> carrier charge. That time year may piss me off. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the ornate bow I have worth two hundred fifty gold pieces. Yeah, melt, yeah, melt down all the all the uh, shit you got and convert it into gold pieces. Oh, I shit. want to keep my mask. Thank you. Yeah, you want to so. keep your creepy mask. I don't have any creepy mess. Okie dokie. So another 250 divided by four is what? 62 two or three. Yeah, 62. Change. Okay. 62. Yeah, if you guys are hungry, which you look like you are, a gentle mist is running a special today. Ghost fingers. Ghost fingers. I do not believe I've ever had the pleasure. P- perhaps something more substantial. Yeah, <laughs> ghost, <laughs> ghost fingers in a tall stout. I'm telling you, it's to die for. Five silver pieces, you can't beat it. Ghost fingers. <laughs> <laughs> he throws his hands up. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> ghost finger mushrooms. Ghost fingers. <laughs> Get them at your nearest store. <laughs> it sounds delicious, Devitas. 
Shall we dine before we visit Wakenga? Uh, yeah, I mean, last time Wakenga's food wasn't the best, anyways, at least compared to the Gentle Mist. Perhaps we could send a runner and let them know that we'll be at the Gentle Mist if they, if it's urgent, then they can join us. Petri! <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Literally jumped. <laughs> that goddamn kid. I, I'd send him as a runner, but I can't find him. Oh, oh, that's right. Never mind. I was just remembering the medallion, but we figured out what that was. The Remember Timora the, medallion? No, the other one that said, like, stop fucking off or we'll kill you. Oh, yeah. From, like, the assassins. From the flaming mist, fist? No, it no. was from the tricep. Oh, yeah, thing. from the law, sort of the law of the land. Yeah. yeah, the people's law. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Devitas, I do believe that um, I had placed an order with a cobbler to send some boots to my youngest sister back home in Bergost. Oh, yeah, the Dushine fella. Yeah, yeah, what about it? Have you received the commission and shipped it to my family? Uh, I think I, I haven't done it, uh, but... And hold on, he starts rummaging through some papers. Oh yeah, here, yeah, here it is. Here's your invoice right here. Oh shit, it's past due. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> got fruit juice all over it. I'll handle it. Don't worry about it. But yeah, sa- he says he shipped it out. I do trust you to keep my family's good name, <laughs> Mister Devitas. Oh, of course, the three C shipping and freight. Handles all the good names. Takes a bite of fruit. Well, before we depart, Devatos, have Petrie ready a box for shipping for me. Need not be big, but, you know, <laughs> Bigger small than a box. bread box. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> in comparison to a bread box. <laughs> a, a bread box would do just fine. What's right. in the box? <laughs> a box? <laughs> all right, I'll take care of it for you. Now get on, get out of here. Good seeing you guys again. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you too, Mr. Devitas. You do look well. I'm sure I look busy. He sits down at the desk. Success like, suits you. Yeah, well, we're all on the up and up now. I'm wondering how long it'll be before they replace me. Uh, you are irreplaceable, Devitas. <laughs> My expertise is going in, being the first guy there. Setting everything up. Now it's all set up. I'm worried that Alarod's going to take over. Yeah. Uh. He does look great in eyeliner. Speaking of which, get the hell out of here. He's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's eat. Yeah, we begin to move toward the um, gentle mist. The idea of a bath. As you approach the gentle mist, you can hear the trance-like stringed instruments coming from within. The smell of... A certain fragrance of incense fills your nose as you enter. Quincy's mm. going to uh, just make a mental note of the music that's playing. I'm picturing like an Arabic uh, yeah. vibe. I'm thinking maybe when we're out in the jungle again or out somewhere, it might be comforting to the party mm. to be able to play this song. Sure, sure. I'm thinking as we're entering, Cappy's noticing how fucking filthy we are compared to normal society. Mm. I, uh, I will be so happy to see that tiefling woman. I might just kiss her. Perhaps we should bathe first this time, my friends. <laughs> mm. Yes, bathe, then eat. Although, the smell of that food. Yeah, you sm- it smells delicious. And as you enter, you do see the tiefling. And I don't remember her accent. So I'm going to go ahead with... Ah, uh, greetings, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, Malenko? <laughs> <laughs> what will it be today? Uh, will it be a bath first, or perhaps you wish to eat first? A bath. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very well, just follow me, please. A bathing um, when, uh, with the uh, cleaners. Can we get cleaners this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and can appetizers be brought to the bath? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no food allowed in the bathhouse. I think we went over this last time. <laughs> we did. We tried to eat in the bath, and they were like, no, you're gross. Well, I yep. guess the rules haven't changed. Nope. 
<laughs> what if we just rented the entire bathroom out for ourselves? Uh, I, I fear that is not a possibility. Uh, that would involve us kicking out our constituents. Everything has a price. A price we cannot afford, Copernicus. She raises her hands and says, My hands are tied, my friend. The gentle mist is the people's lounge. Come, the sooner we bathe, the sooner we get to eat. Will you be in the general pool, or perhaps maybe you would like a special bath? Perhaps with a happy ending. (laughs) (laughs) The Robert It could be our last uh, (laughs) (laughs) chance. You have to look like you're going somewhere dangerous. <laughs> the general oh, yeah. bath will be fine for me. Well, very well. Uh, through that curtain there, uh, she points to like a beaded curtain. You remember. You remember yeah. the place. You know where to go. Ah, uh, but perhaps in the gentle, in the general area, we'll be bothered by people who recognize us. Nobody knows what we look like, Quincy. Mm. Come now. Only our names, if anything. Irbe at that actually will take her glasses off because uh, high elf wearing glasses isn't something, or an elf in general wearing glasses isn't something you see. She fears. She thinks that could be a giveaway. It's like the anti Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's certain things about us, like you have one pointed ear. You know, that and could give. And dark skin of a drow. Yeah, that could give it's Cappy probably away. Probably not many. Yeah. But it's that would drive it home. Is Quincy's mustache still fuzzy? I guess it's only been a month or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine you've got scruff everywhere in the jungle. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's humid. I was going to say in the bath, Cappy wants a shave. He's going to shave it all, Don't everything off. Don't you fucking shave in the bath that I'm in with you. <laughs> I imagine there's probably a little Yeah, it's always the way I thought. I thought like a river ran through it. It is. Oh, it does. A river runs through it. A river does run through it. <laughs> all right. It's acceptable. So he wants a stash, just like I've got right now. Oh, do we have to put the picture of your stash on something? Uh, There's no reason to put that. (laughs) You look straight out of Super Troopers. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I have a bottle of maple syrup. We can take a photo of you just... Saying like uh, meow, the meow bit from Super Troopers. (laughs) So you guys bathe and clean up. You sit at the dinner table. They're serving ghost mushrooms and stout and... The other item, because there's only two, is Deacon's Choice, which appears to be a steak and wine. What kind of steak? Dinosaur steak. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> steak from a rancid sea serpent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the steak sounds much more substantial. We'll take two of everything. <laughs> the stakes are the 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 deacon's choice is one gold piece for the meal, which ghost fingers and stout five silver. I'll take right. the steak. The deacon's choice. Yeah, deacon's choice. Deacon's what? choice. Rare. Deacon post pokes is that a, a wise <laughs> choice, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, and you guys eat. So Irme will look to Quincy, who we haven't been able to converse with a lot. So while we were in the Fane, was there anything in particular you found when you were with Orvex? Orvex, Riga, and I, uh, we made sure that the immediate area around our camp was well secured. We wanted to make sure we weren't sitting around doing nothing while we were waiting for you. We kept close guard on the puzzle cubes but other than that we've been just waiting waiting until the moment that you return with the ninth cube so that we may see this thing through to the end and meanwhile while he's saying all that Quincy's thinking internally like he has the third part of the Krugen sphere in his pocket deception check baby and he still doesn't know (laughs) (laughs) And he still doesn't know if, uh, you know, what he should do. He doesn't know if he should give it to Copernicus. He doesn't know if he should try to destroy it. Um, He's kind of, at this point, just waiting for either a sign or for some insight. Um, He's not really sure what to expect. And it 
after his vision with Master Triss, it maybe seems just a little less dangerous or a little less evil than it did before. But he's still not quite sure. All right, and in the back of Ira May's mind, she finds herself thinking a lot about um, how the conversation with Rosnessy went and also about she's trying not to uh, get fully preoccupied with seeing Wakanga soon. She's very excited to be able to see Wakanga, but she's trying to she's trying to push that back in her mind and focus on on what's ahead while she's with her comrades because she feels that that's unfair. And of course, the ever hovering question of if she's going to solve this problem before her father passes and of Wesson and what's to become of him. Is he dead? Is he in some sort of strange state? Can we trust Valindra? So she's uh, doing her best to enjoy what's in front of her and to converse with her friends and balance all of that at the same time. Yeah, Copernicus chomping away, getting his fill after weeks of eating rations and maybe a couple of those fresh fish that Zavril caught in the Aldani Basin, but it's been hard going tack food for the last few weeks. And he's got a lot on his mind, you know, he always does, but he's starting to think he's put all this effort into the past and to what's gone. I don't know. I think maybe he's just starting to think a little bit more about the future and not in like, not so much of what, what, he doesn't have anymore about what he could have and um i've been waiting for that moment from copernicus for a long time does that mean uh cappy's trying to fucking hit on valindra now and is gonna forget his wife (laughs) (laughs) but no just recognizing that maybe he's found a family yeah or yeah so that's what's going on with him where's avril's thoughts Zabril is glad to be back in civilization. He thought everything was moving way too fast in Omu. Um, The whole thing about meeting people revered as gods or, you know, just kind of uh, sets him off. Like, he doesn't really want to partake in that. Um, Zabril's a simple man. He's not absolutely out there trying to seek something as grand as saving all the people of Chult. And as this is moving closer towards that ending, it's kind of, I don't know, he's starting to feel really weird about it. You guys are eating. Lost in your thoughts. One thing's for sure. You all get this strange sensation that today is going to be a big day on the Natty 19 podcast. We'll see you next time. So So did you like mess with something? You do, Simone. Birds in the sky. You know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. And I'm feeling good. (laughs) Bobo. I was like. The switchback. You should try some of this uh, maple madness. If you're going to have a beer, Uh, take a sip. I don't know. I'm winging it tonight. No, you're not going to get. It's not. Not bad. (laughs) You must stay focused. Remember what happened last time you had that feeling? Uh, no, help, help me. <laughs> <laughs> throwing that on you. I don't know. Uh, it's different this time. <laughs> <laughs> Things are different this time. <laughs> you say that every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's for breakfast? Sadly, Grandfather doesn't believe in me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Do your headphones work? He's thinking. He's thinking uh, on. <laughs> See his eyes going. I thought he was like looking at internet porn or something. Tentacle porn. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs>